Why such speed, Jesla? Look, bear him a path. We must hurry before dark. What is that? How strange. All the times we've been hunting in these woods and we've never seen it. It's not so strange. The fire burned off some of the brush, that is all. Probably an animal trail. Let's follow it. Maybe we'll find a deer. I hate to go home empty-handed. Jesla, don't. Uh... Hmm, Jesla, I... Let's turn back, sister. There's nothing here. What's that? Perhaps it's the gates of the rainbow, or... I wonder what this used to be. There's such a solemn feeling about it. A holy feeling, but an evil feeling too. It must have been a temple before the cataclysm. A temple to the evil gods. Barum, what are you doing? This place is sacred to some god, you can't. If this was some god's home, she's abandoned it and won't care if I take a few jewels. No. We've nothing, Jesla, and there's a hard winter coming. With these, we can move away from the wretched place. We'll go to a city, maybe Palantis. Stop! You're committing sacrilege! Leave me be! Jesla! Jesla! I... I... The harbor city of Lotsam. Expecting the High Warlord today? What? No, I... The High Lord was called away to deal with a problem somewhere near Solemnia. Where are you off to then? I don't see that's any of your business where I go or what I do. No offense, it's just that if the High Lord comes back, I'd be glad to tell her where you could be found. That won't be necessary. I... I've left her a note explaining my absence. I admire a man who can keep her satisfied for that long. None of the others have come close. What was your name again? I just need to get a breath of air. Tannis. Tannis Half-Elven. I don't doubt that, you haven't left her room for three days. Karam 
come on. What? Huh? What's wrong, Grace? I heard a noise outside, the sound of a scabbard clinking against armor. I see him. Ooh. Hold. I... Tannis? We thought you were dead. Hello, Karamon. Where have you been? We were sick with worry. You'd better tell the others, brother. Right, sure. Where have you been, half-elf? I... I was captured by a dragon high lord. He thought I was one of the officers, naturally, and asked me to escort him to his troops. Of course, I had to do as he asked or make him suspicious. Finally, this morning, I was able to get away. Interesting. I've never heard you lie before, Tennis. I find it quite fascinating. Tennis? My friend. We'd fear you'd been captured or worse. Hello, Tika. It's good to see you, Tennis. Riverwind. What happened? Where were you? I... He was captured by a dragon high lord. It's quite a tale, but we have no time for stories now. We have to meet Maquista at the docks. Maybe we shouldn't even risk going out if this storm gets worse. We're going today. If we have to swim, we're leaving Flotsam. I'm sorry, I know I sound arbitrary, but there are dangers I know about that I can't explain right now. All I can tell you is this, we have never in our lives been in more dire peril than we are at this moment in this town. We must go now, please get your things, please. Of course, Tennis, we trust you. Soon. Mistress will not be pleased. Shortly. What? Hi, Lord. Walk with me, Garkan. Yes, Mistress. He left at dawn, High Lord. And you followed him as I ordered? Of course. He went to an inn near the edge of town called the Jedis. Another woman. I think not, High Lord. We had reports of strangers roaming here, but since they don't match the description of the Green Gemstone Man, we did not investigate them. From there he went to the docks, I believe he's planning to live, Port. What? Find out when and how. Yes, mistress.
a note. Kitiara. All the days, these days are rocked in dark and waiting, in regret, in absence. You grew more beautiful, more poisonous. But still I think of Lorana, Sturm and the others. How could I abandon them? I... Tennis, you fool! Go back to your inn. We aren't sailing today. Not with a storm coming in. We have to, Maquista. Look, if you're in some kind of trouble, it's not my concern. I am not risking my ship or my crew. Not me. You. You dare threaten, Captain? Enough, Korav. What do you mean, Half-Elf? I know why the High Lord and the Draconians are searching Flotsam. I know what, who they're looking for. Not the Percheron. Your helmsman. Baron? Why? The men's a mute and a half-wit. I don't know. I'm not even sure they know. But they're under orders to find him at all costs. Well, get rid of him. Put him ashore. It won't matter. Once they found out he was here, and they will find out, they'll arrest you and everyone on this ship. Arrest and get rid of you. They have done it before. Whole villages destroyed. People tortured, murdered. My tribe met such a fate. God save me. This is Goldmoon. She speaks the truth. I'd rather be out on the open sea than trapped like a rat on shore. Run up the sails, Korath. Get us out of here. Aye, Captain. Prepare your friends, Half-Elf. This isn't going to be what you call a relaxing ocean voyage. Uh, I seen him. A mage. Two warriors and a couple of women. They... Uh, they boarded the Percheron less than an hour ago. And where is the Percheron? There. Damnation. Wind filled the Percheron sails, taking the ship straight into the blood sea of Istar. Once Istar had been the greatest empire on all of Kryn, so powerful that its leader, the King Priest, he sought to rival the gods. A cataclysm was the punishment for his pride. A fiery mountain struck the city, destroying it. And as Istar and the land found it, were pushed down, the ocean roared in it to fill the gap, creating the Blood Sea. Do you suppose it's true that this is the blood of all those who died in Istar? That's nothing but an old sailor story, Rivermate. 
The water gets its color from the soil washed up from the bottom. What's left of the city and its countryside? What keeps the soil stirred up? It should have settled by now. Supposedly there's a maelstrom at the center of the Blood Sea that whirls with such force it drags the dirt up from the bottom. Supposedly. You've never seen it. No one has. No one who lived to tell the tale anyway. Deck ho! To the west! A ship? Don't know. Cloud may be. But it go fast, faster any cloud I ever see. That's no cloud. It's a flight of dragons. Set sail now! We cannot outsail dragons. You were followed, half elf. Ah! I. Uh, ah! Karaf, stop! No, Karaf. Maybe Baron's right. Follow us into the storm. If we can just keep on its outskirts. Ah. It's him! The green gemstone man! Bring him to me and we will have all of green at our feet! The Dark Queen will reward us beyond anything we ever dreamed! Caramon Rivermoon, take Gold Moon Tika and Wasteland below deck. the dragon in too steep. She could not avoid hitting the waves. She is gone. We are safe. <sighs> You've destroyed us. You and that god-cursed helmsman. Our peril has only just begun. We're caught in the maelstrom!
of the blood sea of Istar. It sent a great millstone churns, destroying all who dare look upon it. Damn me to the abyss! A violent whirlpool from which there can be no escape. Below! Get below! Betrayed us, Tannis. You knew Kitiara was coming after us. That's why you wanted to leave Flotsam in such a hurry. You spent the last four days with her, didn't you? With our sister! Please, Karamon. You have to believe me. Why? All right. You haven't any reason to believe me, but at least listen to me. On the docks, Kit saved my life. Then she recognized me. She thought I'd join the army. What could I say? She took me back to the inn and... And... And you spent four days and nights in the loving embrace of a dragon high lord. Meanwhile, we waited for you like a bunch of trusting lame brains. Yes, I was with her. I loved her, but I never betrayed you. When she left for Solemnia, was the first chance I had to escape and I took it. I may be a fool, but I'm not a traitor. Ah. If I had betrayed you, why didn't I just send a few draconians to the inn to pick you up? Why didn't I lead them to Barum? He's the one that Kitiara wants. Kitiara offered me the rulership of Kryn, if I tell her. That's how important he is. Don't tell us you didn't consider it. I... I loved her. All these years I refused to see what she was. And even when I knew I couldn't help myself for five years, she's been in my dreams. But when Kit was gone, I lay in her bed, and I hated myself. You may hate me now, but you cannot hate me as much as I loathe and despise what I have become. I thought of Lorana, and... I should see to the wounded above deck. I'll come too. Enough of this foolishness. Raceland, what are you doing? I'm fleeing certain death, half-elf. What do you think I'm doing? It's simple, really. Though probably beyond your weak mind. Using my magic and that of the Dragon Orb, I will become pure energy, pure light. In becoming light, I can travel through the heavens like the rays of the sun. Returning to this physical world whenever and wherever I choose. Can the orb do this for all of us? Possibly, but I will not chance it. I know I can escape. The others are not my concern. You led them into this blood red death, half elf. You get them out. You pathetic worm! Stand back. Stop him, Caramon. 
he won't hurt you. Tell him, brother. Tell ten is what I am capable of doing. But we're forbidden to speak of it, Parcellian said. That doesn't matter now. Once I have what has been promised me, not even the great Parcellian will have the power to face me. The last test in the Tower of High Sorcery Tennis was against myself and I failed. I killed him. I killed my brother. Or at least I thought it was Karamon. As it turned out, it was an illusion created to teach me the depths of my hatred and jealousy. Thus they thought to purge my soul of darkness. What I truly learned was that I lacked self-control. Still, since it was no part of the true test, my failure didn't count against me, except with one person. I watched him kill me. They made me watch so that I'd understand him. I'm sorry, Raced. Just don't go without me. You're so weak. You need me. No longer, Karamon. I need you no longer. Don't make him come near me, Tannis. I assure you I am capable of this. What I have sought all my life is within my grasp. I will let nothing stop me. Look at Karamon's face, half-elf. He knows. I killed him once, I can do it again. Farewell, brother. Karaman needs you, Tika. Tennis? What happened? Raceland's gone. He lied to us. The way. I don't suppose that matters now. How much time do we have? Not long, Elf. Not long. Suicide is forbidden to the Elves. They consider it blasphemy, but Tannis stared into the blood red sea with anticipation and longing. Let death come swiftly, he prayed. Let these blood-stained waters close over my head. Let me hide in their depths. And if there are gods, if you are listening to me, I ask only one thing. Keep the knowledge of my shame from Lorana. I have brought pain to too many. My brother. Dragon! Kitiara! The green gemstone man is mine! Get down, Baram!
The ship is breaking apart! Astinus of Palanthus sat in his study, filling sheet after sheet of parchment, as yet since the dawn of the world, and would continue to do so until all life upon Crin came to an end. Only then would his history, his chronicles, be complete. Master! Astinus heard his assistant bear him, but he didn't look up. The historian could count the number of times he'd stopped work on his fingers, and one of those had been during the cataclysm. That had disturbed his writing. Astinus recalled remembering with disgust the spilled ink that had ruined a page. I regret disturbing you, master, but a young man is dying on our doorstep. This day, as above restful hour, climbing twenty-nine, a young man died on our doorstep. Get his name so I may record it, be certain as to the spelling, and find out where he's from, his age, if he's not too far gone. I have his name, Master, it is Raislin. He comes from Solace Township of the land of Absinia. This day, as above restful hour, climbing twenty-eight, Raislin of Solace died. Raislin of Solace? Do you know him, Master? He has asked to see you. Where is he? On the steps, Master. We thought perhaps one of these uh, new healers who worship the goddess Mishkal might aid him. No healer can cure this young man's malady. Bring him inside. Give him a room. But Master, no one has ever been admitted to the library except those of our order. I will see him at the end of the day, if he's still alive, that is. Yes, Master. Raislin knew he was dying and the knowledge was bitter to the mage. Raceland cursed his frail body. He cursed the tests that shattered it. He cursed the gods who had inflicted it upon him. He cursed until he had no more words to hurl, until he was too exhausted to think. For the second time in his life, Raceland was alone and frightened. The first had been during those three torturous days of testing in the tower. Or was it? The voice. The voice that spoke to him sometimes. The voice he could never identify, but seemed to know. <coughs> he had always connected the voice with the tower. It had helped him there, as it had helped him since. Because of that voice, he had survived the ordeal. But he wouldn't survive this, Raislin knew. 
The magical transformation he had undergone had placed too great a strain on his frail body. He had survived, but at what cost? There was only one chance remaining to him. The books inside the great library. The dragon orb had promised him that these tomes held powerful secrets of ancient ones. Perhaps there he could find the means to extend his life. Raislin longed to call out for help, but Caramon was gone. They were all gone, the fools. He would have to look after himself. I am Astinus. You are Raislin of Solace. I am. You look at me strangely, young mage. What do you see with those hourglass eyes of yours? I see a man who is not dying. The Master was here to chronicle the birth of the first upon Kryn, so he will be here to chronicle the last. My personal history is of no consequence. Now speak, Raislin of Solace. What do you want of me? I ask, I beg a favor. My life is measured in hours. Let me spend them in study in the great library. Do what you will. Wait, you asked what I saw when I looked at you. Now I ask you the same thing. You recognize me somehow. You know me. Who am I? What do you see? You said you saw a man who was not dying. I see a man who is. Fools! Raislin had been in the library for hours gathering books of ancient magic. Tomes which could only be opened by those with the skill and control to study the spells written inside. Yet he couldn't read any of them. Each required a key to decipher its text. A key known to all before the Cataclysm, one so simple they found no need to record it. All I need is lost. So this ends your journey, my old friend. You do know who I am. It is no longer important. Don't turn your back on me as you have turned it on the world, Astinus. Turn my back upon the world. I am the world. I sit with my hand on the sphere of time. The sphere you made for me, old friend. I travel Kryn chronicling its history. I have committed the blackest deeds. I have made the noblest sacrifices. I am human, elf and ogre. I am man and woman. I am all and I am nothing. And those who read my books know what it is to have lived in any time, in any body that ever walked this world. On the last perfect day, three gods will come together, Paladine in his radiance, Tarkesis in her darkness, and Gillian, Lord of Neutrality. In their hands, each bears the key of knowledge, and then... The key. <laughs> uh, 
I know, I know. I know who you are. I know you now and I beseech you come to my aid. Come to my aid as, as you came to me in that tower and in Sylvanesti. Our bargain is struck. Save me and save yourself. Next, the Oath of the Dragons. Fabled for its beauty and grace since the Age of Might, Palanthas was one of the largest and wealthiest cities in all of Kryn, the Jewel of Solemnia. But since the battle at nearby High Clarist Tower, the mood in Palanthas had been a dark one. The armies of the Dragon High Lord had been routed for now, but they would return, leaving the citizens but with two options. To flee, or to fight. Though not everyone in the city was preoccupied with such weighty concerns. We should be with Lorana, we don't have time. There's always time to explore, Flynn. But if you don't like it, go back. And leave you wandering the streets of Palanthas alone? Ha! We risked our necks to save this place and I'll not let it be looted by a doorknob of a candor. Hmm. What? Where are we? Well, uh... Where... how did you get us lost? Me? You're the one who... Look, these shops, they're all deserted. How strange. Not even rats. I wonder... No. No further, absolutely not. Come on, it'll be fun. Soon. Why it's so cold? It's winter. It isn't winter except around here. Let's g get out of here. Just a few more feet. W what is that? That was the Tower of High Sorcery. The tower's been cursed since before the Cataclysm. Dreadful place, though I didn't think even it could scare a Kender. It was most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life.
How did the tower come to be cursed, Lord Amotheus? Well, it's a long story. And one Lady Lorana should hear. Astinus, your honor us with your presence. I was asked to come, and I came. Nothing more. Now, as to your question about the tower, that tale begins long ago, during the Age of Might, when the King Priest of Istar began jumping at shadows and gave his fears a name, Magic Users. He did not understand their power, and so it became a threat to him. It was easy to arouse the populace against the wizards, who had never truly been trusted, for they allowed among their ranks representatives of all three powers in the universe, good, neutrality and evil. The mages understood, as the king priest did not, that a balance must be maintained. And so the populace rose up against the magic users. Marching on their towers of high sorcery, where the wisdom and lore they'd spent centuries gathering was being held. For only the second time in the history of the world, the robes came together, white, red, and black. Allied by a common threat, they made a difficult decision. The mages destroyed two of the towers themselves, laying waste to the land around them. This display of power so frightened the king priest that he offered the mages a compromise. They would be allowed to keep the tower in the forest of Weyrath, but must abandon their stronghold in Palanthes to become property of the church. So on that fateful day the highest of the order closed the tower's slender gates and locked them with a silver key. But then, one of the black robes appeared and proclaimed a curse. The gates, the gates will, will remain, remain closed, closed until, the, until day the day comes, comes, comes when the master, when the master of both, both past and present, present returns, returns with, with power. power. and he sealed this dark spell with his own blood. The people fled in terror, and to this day none dare enter the Tower of Palanthus. The master of both past and present? Who's that? Bah, the man was mad, and we have more important matters to attend to than some dusty old stories. Ah, Sir Patrick, Sir Markham, welcome. I've received a communique from Lord Gunthar, and thought we should all be present for its reading. Greetings, Amotheus, Lord of Palantas. I am grieved to hear of the loss of so many of our knighthood, but find comfort in the knowledge they died victorious. The deaths of Derek Crownguard and Stern Brightblade were especially tragic. As their passing leaves our remaining soldiers, at High Clarice Tower without a commander. Therefore, I appoint to fill the position of leadership Lorana of the Royal House of Qualanesti, as she is the most experienced person currently in the field and the only one with the knowledge of how to use the Dragonlance.
he what? Congratulations, my dear. Or should I say, general? I cannot accept this. Lady Lorana is a valiant warrior, but she's a woman. Oh, and so having hair on your chest makes you a general? Relax, it's politics. Gunthar made the right choice. But there's no precedent for this. This measure does not allow women to join the knighthood. During the Third Dragon War, a young woman was accepted into the Knights of Salamnia, rose to Knight of the Sword and died honorably. There is a precedent. But I... I didn't want this. I don't believe any of us were sitting around praying for a war. But war has come, and you must do what you can to win it. Now, if we're finished, I must return to my library. Astinus, wait, please. It said you see everything that is happening as it occurs. I do. Then you could tell us where the dragon armies are. What are they doing? You know that as well as I do. Now, Lorana, what do you really want to ask me? I... I have a friend. His name is Tannis. Where is he? Put it out of your thoughts. What do you mean? I have seen time since it began. I have seen love that brought hope to the world. I have seen love that tried to overcome pride and a lust for power but failed. And the world was darker for it. But the sun, the love still remains. Finally, I have seen love lost misplaced and misunderstood because the lover did not know his or her own heart. You speak in riddles. Do I? Farewell, Lorana. My advice to you is this. Concentrate on your duty. I will take leadership of the armies. Congrat... There's nothing to congratulate me about. What do I command? A handful of knights and a thousand men who stand upon the walls of a city. We can hold Palanthus against the dragon army for a week, maybe a month, but then what? What happens when they control the land around us? The dragon lances are no use against dragons in flight, and so all we can do is shut ourselves up in little havens. Soon this world will be nothing but tiny islands of light in a vast ocean of darkness, and then... One by one, the darkness will engulf us all. Look! Look! What is it, your darn up? Dragons! To arms! We're doomed! We're all doomed! They're 
not reds or blues. The glint of the dragon's wings looks almost metallic, as if they were. Silver. They're here, like in Pax Tarkis, Fizban was right. The good dragons have come. Praise be to Lawrence. Now we have a chance. Who are they? What do they want? Who brought them? These are the Silver Dragons. Good dragons that have joined us in our battle against the evil dragons, as in the legend of Huma, and they have been brought by. Gilthanes. Lorana. Silvara is here. She's here in her true form. Where have you been? How did you get the dragons to come? Why? You have many questions, my sister. And we have answers. Though not all of them are pleasant, I'm afraid. Come, let us go somewhere we can speak in private. Shortly, after I gave Theros Ironfield the power to forge the dragon lances, I spent much time with the companions, showing them paintings of the Dragon War, which picture good dragons fighting evil. Where are they, your people? they asked me. Why aren't they helping us in our time of need? I held out against their questions as long as I could, but finally, his, their pressure was too much. I told them about the oath. When the Queen of Darkness and her evil dragons were banished, the good dragons left the land as well, to maintain the balance. Made of the world, we return to the world, sleeping an ageless sleep, and we would have remained asleep, but then came the cataclysm, and Tarkesis found her way back into the world again. Before Paladine was aware of her, the Dark Queen awoke her evil dragons and ordered them to steal the eggs of the good dragons. They took them to Sention, where the dragon armies were forming, and hid them away in the volcanoes known as the Lords of Doom. Great was the grief of the good dragons when Paladine awoke them from their sleep, and they discovered what had occurred. They went to Takesis to learn what price they would have to pay for the return of their unborn children and it was a terrible one. She demanded each dragon swear not to take part in the war she was about to wage on Kryn. She knew that, without our help, the world would fall. What could we do? The Dark Queen told us they would murder our children unless we obeyed. Paladine couldn't help us. The choice was ours. We took the oath. I persuaded Silvara that this oath was wrong. 
I thought there must be some way to save the eggs, perhaps with a small group of men. She wasn't convinced but agreed to take me to Sanction, so that I could see for myself if such a plan might work. Our journey was long and difficult. Someday I may tell you of the dangers we faced, but I cannot now. There is no time. Silvara in her elven form and I were captured outside of Sanction and made prisoners of the Dragon High Lord Ariacus. Lord Verminard was nothing compared to Ariacus. The man's evil power is immense, and he's an intelligent as he is cruel. It's he who controls the dragon armies and has led them to victory after victory. The suffering we endured at his hands I cannot describe. I do not even believe I can ever relate what they did to us. Finally, with help, we escaped. We were in Sanction itself, a hideous place built with dark magic and the blood of slaves. And high above Sanction, built into the side of a volcano, was the Temple of Chakesis. Where the good dragon's eggs were hidden. Some god must have been watching over us, for we were able to sneak into the temple and find the chambers where the eggs were housed. Pressing on, we discovered another chamber, one filled with nothing but shells, shattered, broken. Then we heard the chanting. At the bottom of the volcano stands an altar to Tarkesis, so covered with green blood and black slime that it seemed a hoarded growth sprung from the rock. There we watched as Tarkis's servants performed their foul ritual. of darkness has been using the good dragon's eggs, corrupting them to birth her draconians. Once again the gods were with us, Silvara and I fled Sanction, and journeyed to the haven of the good dragons, where we revealed what we had found. At first they refused to believe, but in time we convinced them that they had been deceived, that the oath was no longer binding. Now my people have come to our aid, flying to all parts of the land and offering their help. I only hope we're not too late. Lorana, we must talk. What is it? Is something wrong with father? You've heard that our people have allied with the humans in Urgoth to drive the dragon armies from those isles. Yes, because of Valhanna, she convinced them we could no longer live apart. She even convinced Portheos. She convinced him of more than that. There's talk of marriage. One of convenience? I cannot imagine our elder brother has the heart to love anyone but himself. 
And as for Alhana, her heart is buried in High Clary's tower with Sturm. Is that what you wanted to tell me? No, I... something happened in Sanction. Something involving Tannis. As we were making our escape, I overheard a conversation between Ariakas and one of his commanders, a woman named Kitiara. She said she and Tannis were lovers. She laughed about it and asked permission to promote him to the rank of general in exchange for, please stop. I'm sorry, Lorana. I know how much you love him. I know now what is to love. Leave me, Gilthanes. The good dragons had returned to Kryn, and that brought with them hope. For the first time it seemed possible that the dark armies might be slowed, even defeated altogether. With the help of their newfound allies, the Knights of Solemnia could take the battle to the sky, fighting the evil dragons on their own terms, though getting airborne was proving difficult for some. Let go of me, ya doorknob! I'll get in my own good time without help from you. Well, you'd better do it quickly because the others are already mounted. Come on, Flint, please. I'll go by myself if... You'll do no such thing. The war's finally turning in our favor. Send a Kendur up on a dragon and that be the end. We might as well just hand the High Lord the keys to the city. Pardon me, respected sire. Ah! Ooh, he can talk. I can indeed. And I'd be happy to help you, good dwarf, with the assistance of your squire. Squire? Me? That's right. You get up there and do as you're told. I... I'm Tesselhoff Barefoot. What's your name? You may call me Kirsa. There the saddle will keep you stable in flight. The dragon lens can be used to strike at our enemies when we get near, and the shield protects you from most forms of dragon breath. What do you mean, most? It's extremely safe. Now we should be off. Come on, Sir Flint, unless you're scared. <sighs> I'll show you scared.
Now, how do I steer? You indicate which direction you want me to turn by pulling on the reins. Ah, I see. After all, I'm in charge. Certainly, sire. Wait, the reins! Ah! We! Isn't this fun, Flint? The past few weeks had been glorious. The Golden General, as Lorana came to be called by her troops, had forged an army seemingly out of nothing. The Palantians rallied at her cause, and she had earned the loyalty of the Knights of Solemnia with her bold ideas. Lorana's ground forces surged out of Palantis pressing the unorganized armies of the Dragon High Lord, known as the Blue Lady, into panic. Now with victory after victory behind them, the men considered the war as good as won. Lorana knew better. They had not yet fought the High Lord's dragons, but that was about to change. I see them! Inform the men! Hi, General! A host of reds and blues had been sighted heading westward to stop the insolent general and her army. Rana knew her men respected her, perhaps even loved her. Many claimed that follow their golden general to the abyss itself. She was about to put that pledge to the test. Attack! I can't see. We have to get closer. We're fine right here. No need to go rushing in before we get the lay of the land. Isn't that right, Kirsa? Kirsa! Go south, flank them! Go, go! What? Ah! Flint, what's wrong? Ah, nothing! Then why were you holding your chest? Aye. When we hit the blue, I hurt my collarbone, that's all. Set the lance, dwarf. Aim for its heart. Ah! Flint, release the lance. I'm trying to get stuck. Fools. 
No. Ah. Uh. Why do you resist? You're already dead, dwarf. The lance pulled it free. Well done, sire. Take us back, Kirsa, now. We did it. We fought a dragon and I captured a prisoner single-handed. Did you have fun, Flint? I'll have fun when we're on the damned ground. The Knights of Solemnia won their first battle against the Dark Wind's dragons, but at a great cost. Two dozen men and a handful of their brave-winged allies fell that day. Still, the victory allowed the army to push further down the coastline and liberate Kalama, a port city that until recently had been overrun by the Red Dragon Army. Lorana knew the war was far from over. Takesis had more men, more dragons and likely even greater horrors to unleash upon them. But for the moment she allowed herself to be somewhat happy. After all, today was the start of the Spring Dawning Festival. A time of celebration. It's the Golden General, our savior! Hey! Don't tell me you're embarrassed. They shouldn't. I didn't defeat the dragons alone. Let them have their heroine. All winter the people of Kalaman lived in fear. Now they have a beautiful warrior woman who rides out of a children's tale to save them. But it's not true. So? This is good for them, good for us too. The Lord of Calaman has offered to give us whatever supplies we need, and young men are flocking to join up. Our ranks will be swelled by thousands or more before we leave for Dragon Guard. Because of you. You've done amazing things, Lorana. Don't apologize for them. And now it is my honor and my great privilege to present to you the woman who has turned the tide of this war. The woman who has sent the dragon armies fleeing for their lives. The woman who has driven the evil dragons from the sky. The woman whose name is even now being coupled with the great Humus as the most valiant warrior on Kryn. Within a week, she'll be riding Dragon Guard Keep to demand the surrender of the vile Blue Lady. They'll be giving me credit for putting the stars in the sky, too. I give you Lorana of the Royal House of Qualanesti. Sir Markham, I have a message for the General. She's a bit busy right now. But, but it's urgent. The message, it's from the Dragon High Lord. That's enough. Who is he? Bacaris, High Master of the Blue Dragon Army. And the message? Where did you get it? It was delivered to the headquarters by a cleric 
The parchment bears the High Warlord's seal. No. What's wrong? The message, it's from Kitiara. Leave us. But now. Read it, please. I can't. Janice half Elven received a wound in the Battle of Vingard Keep. The witch has worsened, so that he is past even the help of the Dark Clerics. Janice knows the gravity of his injury. He asks that he be allowed to be with you when he dies, that he might explain matters to you and rest with an easy spirit. I will exchange Tannis half Elven for my man back Harris. The exchange will take place at dawn tomorrow in the grove of trees beyond the city walls. Bring back Harris with you and, if you wish, you may also bring Tannis friends, Flint, Fireforge and Tasselhoff Barefoot, but no one else. The bearer of this note waits outside the city gate. Meet him tomorrow at sunrise if you wish to see Tannis alive again. I do this only because we are two women who understand each other. Signed, Kitiara. Hmm, rubbish. What? Tennis is dying. He is not. It's a trap. Besides, Kitiara is a dragon high lord now. Tennis wouldn't have anything to do with her. Yes, he would. I never told you I talked to Kitiara at High Clary's Tower, and she said she left Tannis in some place called Flotsam. She's a liar. No, she was telling the truth, I know it. When she says we're two women who understand each other, she's right. But Tannis loves her, and you both know it. I'm going to exchange back Harris. You can't. You're the leader of an army. People depend on you. Don't do it, Lorana. At least talk to Gilthanes. He'll know. I'm not discussing anything. I'm the general. It's my decision. What would the knights have done with back Harris anyway? They'd just execute him. They owe me something for all I've done. I'll take back Harris as payment. Then at least let me go with you. I care about Tennis too, and if there's any chance he's dying... I want to be with him. Me too. Very well. Next, Lord Soth.